part of our presentation will be identify the potential factors that influence the adoption for BDMs by using a quicker service. First, uh, here is uh, the US uh, consumption per capita for strawberries. So you can see um, the consumption per capita for strawberries has been increasing for the past de uh, decades. So uh, the consumption has been doubled from four pounds per capita in 2001 to the eight pounds per capita in 2012. Also, we choose the strawberries in our study because they are the high value crops and typically using a plastic mulch. Uh, also, the US is the second largest strawberry producer in the world. There are some advantages of using plastic mulch, such as reduce uh, weed growth, increase crop, crop yield, and maintain soil moisture. However, is costly during removal and disposal process. Common disposal process, including landfilling, um, burying, and also the stock piling. Uh, as you can see um, from the picture on the right corner, here is an example of stock piling of plastic mulch. Um, Biodegradable plastic mulch, BDM, is an alternative to the PE mulch, and they have the same benefit as the PE mulches. Plus, they are biodegradable, because, uh, meaning that they, there is no need for disposal process. By using that, uh, biodegradable can be the tilly into the soil at the end of the uh, growing seasons. Cost Causes of uh, BDM are higher than PE mulches. However, by using a, a BDM instead of a plastic mulch, can reduce the removal and disposal uh, fees. We have uh, two objectives for our study. Uh, first, to explain the relationship between market information, consumer characteristics, and willingness to pay for strawberries go on BDM. The second, to evaluate consumers' premium for strawberries go on BDM with or without the provision of information on BDM. We randomly collect around 1,510 survey response from U.S. consumers across the state, uh, across the country, including their demographic information, uh, per strawberries purchasing and consumption behavior, and environmental friendly attitudes. The respondents were randomly assigned to two groups, um, one of the two groups. For treatment group, was provided with the information about BDM, wireless a control book was not. So willingness to pay is a research technique to ask, uh, that asks uh, consumers the maximum they are willing to pay for a good or service, given the certain attributes that boost their use or consumption of the products. In this study, we evaluate willingness to pay for strawberry score on BDM based on consumers' purchasing habits, demographic information, and environmental friendly attitudes. So this table shows the results from our first objective of this study, which is a relationship between market information, consumer characteristics, and willingness to pay. So you can see from this example, um, a particular variables will will influence the willingness to pay and by probably higher or lower by the amount of uh, willingness to pay based relative to the basic price uh, for the strawberry, which is uh, $350 per pound. Uh, for example, the female, if consumers are female, uh, they are more willing to pay 11 cents per pound more for strawberry gram BDMs. So for example, the 
consumer with uh, stronger environmental attitudes, they are willing to pay 30 cents, uh, 33 cents per pound more, or consumers are giving the information about BDM, are willing to pay 8 cents per pound more for strawberry guam BDM. So here is a willingness to pay estimate for strawberry guam BDM. Um, the assumption, our baseline, the strawberry price is uh, $350 per pound for strawberries for, as a, for the market price. And here we can see the, on average, the consumers are willing to pay $386 per pound for strawberries or on BDN over the market price, which is uh, around 10% premium uh, in the market. Uh, similarly, for a willingness to pay estimates, uh, the premiums are higher for control and treatment groups. Also, the uh, as third uh, points, meaning the there is a one percent uh, significant difference for the willingness to pay for each group compared to the uh, average market price. So costs are the important factor for the farmers uh, to decide which type of mulch to use. So we use the, this uh, partial budget analysis to evaluate if the price premium can cover higher production costs and, the and the increase the use of BDN. Uh, we have some assumptions here. The first we use the Washington State Strawberry Enterprise budget as a baseline. And we assumed the output price premium of 8.6%. The, the average cost materials, uh, cost materials cost of a BDM, much removal and the disposal cost saving based on the Scargate uh, county feeds. And, the cost of tilling BDN after the growing season and the whole all other variables the same. So here is our results of partial budget analysis for strawberries. Based on our assumption, um, there is a gain of $2,254 per acre in profit when using a BDN, which is 57% higher than using conventional plastic mulch. The increase is based uh, mainly due to the price premium on the revenues. So you can see on the, on the left corner here, and the cost of savings count for 5%. To conclude, respondents who are female and a higher income, more environmental conscious, or know more about BDM, are willing to pay a higher price for strawberry grow on BDM. Informing information about, informing the consumers about the benefits of BDM will likely to lead a greater financial return for growers, um, which means the, because these uh, consumers are willing to pay more for strawberry grow on BDM. Consumer willingness to uh, consumers are more likely to pay 8.6% to 12.6% premium for strawberry guam BDN over the average market price. A mark uh, a price premium can enable stra strawberry growers to cover the additional additional input costs associated with the BDN adoption, which promotes a sustainable production process. As we end the, our first part of the presentation, here are some important resources for if you are interested in the BDM or our projects. The first one is a project website, including publications and video demonstrations. The next three are examples of our publications. Um, you, they can also be found in the website. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I will turn our second part of the presentation to Susei.
Okay, so um, for the second part of our presentation, we are going to do a clicker survey to identify the factors influencing the adoption of BDM by growers. There are four questions about production, general knowledge about BDM, and the use of the alternative mulches. There are six hypothetical questions that will help us estimate the willingness to pay for BDM based on growers' preferences for certain attributes. And lastly, there are five, I'm sorry, there are five questions about the factors to be considered when using BDM and farmer attributes. So in total, there are 15 questions for you. So um, you have the clickers. After I read each question, a countdown timer will appear at the bottom right corner of the screen. Your responses will be collected until the timer disappears. If your response is 10, just press the zero slash J button. And um, we appreciate it if you'll return the clicker to us after the session. Okay, so we'll try two easy questions just to warm up. The first question is, are you in this room? Press one for a yes, two for a no. And then there you'll see the timer, the bottom of the screen. Oh, we have 6% <laughs> of you are not in this room. Okay. Please choose one if you're a grower, two, an educator, three, crop advisor, four, agricultural input supplier, or five, other than the above. Now we start with the survey questions. In 2018, which crop did you grow with the largest acres in your farm operation? Please select all that apply. Strawberries, red raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, vegetables, tree fruit, other crop are not applicable if you're not a grower. Have you ever used plastic mulches in your field? Press one for yes or two for no. Before participating in this conference, how familiar are you with BDMs? Not at all familiar, slightly familiar, moderately familiar, or very familiar. Have you ever used BDMs in your fields? Press one for yes or two for no. Next, you will be presented with six hypothetical scenarios. And in each scenario, please choose the option that you prefer given the following attributes. Change in crop price, this is with or without the price premium. The portion of the original mulch that is left as residue in the field at the end of the growing season. Overall soil health and mulch cost per 1,000 feet. The first two options are about BDM. The third option is about conventional plastic mulch. Please note that there is no crop price premium under option three. Plastic mulch is not tilled into the field. Its cost ranges between $25 to $65 per 1,000 feet. How do we calculate the mulch cost? For instance, we have a four feet by 4,000 feet roll of mulch that costs $260. We divide that figure by four and we get $65 per 1,000 feet. Please consider the following about BDMs as you choose the option you prefer. BDMs are alternative to conventional plastic mulches. They offer the same benefits like plastic mulches, um, such as you know, um, weed control, soil moisture retention, and others. Plus, they have the benefit of being biodegradable. They are not removed and disposed after the growing season. BDMs are tilled into the soil or composted. Now, we will present you with three options in each scenario. Please choose only one. And if you're not a grower, please respond to. We appreciate everyone's responses. 
Okay, here's your first scenario. The change in crop price in options one and two is 10% premium. The portion of mulch residue left in the field at the end of the season is 5% in option one, 30% under option two. In terms of overall soil health, there's no effect under option one, there's 10% decrease under option two. The mulch cost is $120 per 1,000 feet of mulch in option one and $80 under option two. Based on all these details, which option do you prefer? One, two, or three? Second scenario. In terms of crop price, there's 10% premium under option one, no price premium in option two. The portion of mulch residue left in the field is 5% in option one, 30% in option two. In terms of overall soil health, there's 10% decrease in option one, no effect in option two. The mulch cost is $80 in option one and $120 in option two. Which do you prefer, option one, two, or three? Going to scenario three, change in crop price in option one is 10% price premium, no change in option two. Portion of mulch residue left in the field is 30% in option one, 5% in option two. In terms of soil health, there's no effect in option one, 10% decrease under option two. The mulch cost is $80 per 1,000 feet in option one and $120 under option two. Which option do you prefer? One, two, or three. Fourth scenario, change in crop price, there's 10% premium in both options. The portion of mulch residue in the field at the end of the season is 5% under option one, 30% under option two. Option one has no effect on soil health, there's a 10% decrease in soil health in option two. Mulch cost is $80 per 1,000 feet in option one and $120 under option two. Which option do you prefer, one, two, or three? Scenario five, change in crop price well, no change in option one, but there's a 10% price premium in option two. The portion of mulch residue in the field at the end of the season is 30% under both options. Soil health, um, there's 10% decrease in both options. Mulch cost is $80 per thousand feet in option one, $160 in option two. Which option do you prefer, one, two, or three? This is our last scenario. In terms of crop rice, there's no change in option one, but there's a 10% price premium in option two. Portion of mulch residue left in the field at the end of the season is 30% in both options. Soil health, there's 10% decrease in both options. Mulch cost is $160 per thousand feet in option one, $120 in option two. Which option do you prefer? One, two, or three. From the list below, which do you consider to be the most important factor for using BDMs? The cost of the material, labor cost savings, increase in crop production, potential price premium of the crop, benefits of dealing BDM into the field or having that option, visual appearance of mulch fragments in the field after harvest, improved soil health or other. Please try to remember your answer here because in the next slide, we're going to ask your second most important factor for using BDMs.
hear this, what's the second most important factor for you? Same list as before. How many years have you been involved in production as a farm owner, manager, or primary decision maker? Lesson 1, 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, greater than 20 years or not applicable. In 2018, what is the gross on-farm revenue generated from all your farm business? Last question. On a scale of one to nine, where do you assess yourself in terms of risk-taking behavior in your business? One is extremely unwilling to take risk, three unwilling, five is neutral, seven is willing to take risk, nine extremely willing to take risk. The others are in between of those responses, or 10 not applicable. That's the, that's the end of our survey. Thank you so much for participating. So Quan's presentation and this survey is part of a bigger project funded by the USDA Specialty Crop Research Initiative. It is participated by three institutions, WSU, Montana State University, and University of Tennessee. Um, please um, return your clickers to Quan after this session. And we are here if you have some questions. Heather. Any questions or comments, other feedback maybe? Um, no. So um, Quan showed you um, the project website. So here it is. Um, you'll just have to type biodegradablemulch.org. And then that will lead you to this website. Um, the URL states different because it is hosted by the University of Tennessee. So in this site, um, this is a um, rich source of sure. materials. Um, about this site, you have the project team, the overview of the field sites, and the project. Resources of information will give you the publications and video demonstrations, like um, how they lay the mulch and how they, um, till the mulch at the end of the season. I'll just briefly show you basic information resources. So we have here all the um, fact sheets and other publications that um, you can refer to if you're interested in the project or biodegradable mulch in particular. Y'all done, Suzette? Yeah, thank you very much. We've got a, a 20 minute break or so, and we'll be back at four o'clock. See you then.